Now, this question is from Quiet Prosperity. We know staying the course is what will give us the best chance of reaching our financial goals. But given our emotional makeup as humans, are there any practices, advice you could give on how to help fight off the potentially dangerous emotional decisions we are prone to make when the noise gets tuned up or turned up? Well, I'm subject to all those emotions, too. I and mean, I'm not some superhuman human being. Uh, and uh, what I do, when, when you get a 50% market decline, you really get kind of worried. And you get kind of worried about not so much your own account, because I've got half of it, probably a little more than uh, fairly safe bond account that's actually going up when the market's going down at that time from those interest rate levels. And uh, so uh, I didn't really have a lot to worry about, but I still worry and still get knots in my stomach. So what do I do? I get out my first book and read it again. <laughs> and uh, y- y- you reinforce your beliefs. And uh, it's a little hyperbole in that, in that answer, but it's, it's pretty much accurate. It's really, instead of, it sounds good when I say I get out my first book and read it again. And that was really a book ahead of its time. Uh, Dr. Samuelson said, John Bogle has changed an industry in the optimal direction. But very few can this be said. And this is before the development of indexing or anything else. And there was one smart guy. Talk about a genius. Paul Samuelson was certainly that. Um, but uh, it's basically going back to original principles, what got me to invest in the first place, what I expected. Did anybody warn me the market could go down 25 or 30 percent or even 50 percent? You know, it's going to go down. Typically, we don't know any of this but it's a useful thing to think of. The market will probably go down 50% every 25 years, once every 25 years, and over 20% probably six times in every 25 years or eight times. So when it happens, you say, well, there's one, only five to go or something. Or that's, that's the sixth time, that's the last one. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, but it's just going back to first principles and trying to figure out why you're investing, what you're doing, and are you doing it the best way you can. Have you been safe enough? Have you gotten your fair share of market returns? These basic principles are so idiotically simple uh, that one wonders, you know, how could it have how could it have taken 80 years, roughly, no, 75 years, I guess, for somebody to start a mutual mutual fund? How could that have happened? Uh, how could it take until 1975 for someone to figure out that indexing works? It seems inconceivable. I must be the stupidest guy in the world because I was the, I mean, I, I should have thought about it years before. And someone have, should have thought about it years before that. You know, it's, it's all so simple. And I do think that is the way. And that is proving to be the way. And whether the market goes way up or way down, uh, I don't think there are doubts about the value of indexing. Maybe the value of equities is another question, but the value of indexing to get your fair of the stock market. Returns is eternal, and it will continue to change this industry, and it will continue to destroy this industry as we as we know it. Well, I'm a disruptor, in the hell of it. Don't you think that uh, uh, it would be good to remind people, especially the people who are still working and uh, have the 401ks, that they're buying low instead of bailing out? That this is a good opportunity for but for them because their money's going in on a regular basis. Sure, I mean, there's no question about this that. <laughs> People seem to like it when they put their money to work at ever ascending prices and hate it when they're putting their money to work at ever descending prices. Well, that's so backward. <laughs> you should be hoping exactly the opposite. The, the, the problem with that, I mean, the syllogism is almost exactly correct, but the problem is that um, probably, let me guess, that 35 or 40% of the of Vanguard shareholders are accumulating. Maybe 60% or not. I don't know the exact number. Maybe it's 65%. You know, have done all the investing they're going to do. So you're, it's always hard to speak to the 35%, let's say, uh, when the 65% is hurting. So but your, your, your point is well taken. Low prices, are, you know, you go to, go to the grocery store and all the prices are down 50%. You're going to buy everything you can get your hands on. Exactly. 